Okay, so welcome back everyone to Ezra Palooza. Um, I am particularly excited uh, about uh, this session. Uh, we're about halfway through our um, marathon day uh, here on Zoom. Uh, we've had a morning packed with all kinds of events, but um, we, we spent a lot of time listening to people talk. And what we're gonna be doing in this event now um, hopefully with many of you around the world and with your families is we're going to be doing something with our hands. And I am extremely, extremely, extremely excited um, to uh, welcome my dear friend, um, Hanoch, Hanoch Piven. Hanoch, are you there? Yes, uh, start my video. <laughs> there I am. There you are. Hi, Ishi. How are Hi. you? How are you doing, Hi, everyone? <laughs> Hi. Um, and Hanoch and Hanoch is nice going shaving. To... Nice shave. You oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All of the all of the uh, compliments go to my mother, who uh, who was quite uh, happy to see me shave. Um, maybe your mother would be happy too, uh, Hanoch. Uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> Let's so, not talk about my mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we're going to be doing is Hanoch and I are going to talk a little bit um, uh, at the beginning here, and then Hanoch is going to lead us in our creation. And as I told you, I uh, just spent the break collecting all kinds of additional um, additional uh, objects, including Hanoch. Look at this, this beautiful horseshoe crab. Uh, oh wow. Uh, which I found on the beach. Um, okay, so uh, gather your children around. Uh, I know Yochai's kids are all very excited for, uh, for this uh, workshop. We are here with Hanoch Piven, who is an artist and a designer and a creator and a maker of collages and an illustrator and an author and a teacher. And more than all of those things, I think, um, Hanoch is somebody who sees things in a different way in a way, in a way that most of us have forgotten how to see things. And hopefully we're going to get a little uh, insight or window into how to, how, how to remember to see things uh, that we've already forgotten. Hanoch, uh, as many of you will, will know, is um, famous for his portraits um, uh, created by, with op daily common objects from around the house. Uh, as you can see right in back of him. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, his work has appeared all over the place in Newsweek and in Rolling Stone and in Time Magazine and in the Times and in Entertainment Weekly and everywhere you can just imagine. And Hanoch and I actually met several years ago in a uh, conference called Kinernet in, uh, in Israel and Hanoch uh, was, uh, was um, giving a workshop there and I, I, it was just so exciting. It was, I, I, I hadn't thought in that way, um, I, I think since I was a little kid and it was so invigorating that we ended up stay, spending the whole night talking uh, and have since become good friends and we'll talk later on a little bit about our collaboration, also our uh, wonderful mixtape collaboration. But Hanoch, maybe I just wanna start off by asking you what? You said you said to leave mothers out of it, but but uh, but my first question brings your mother back into this, and my, my it's my question is what would your mother have have said or have thought if you would have told her that you would be making a career out of playing around with banana peels and pieces of bologna and uh, and uh, race cars and uh, and uh, and dreidels. Um, well, I think, you know, my mother, when I told her that I wasn't going to study medicine um, and I would go to New York to study illustration um, or graphic design, she was already um, scared, uh, you know, very, very scared. So um, <laughs> this is before we introduced the bananas. So. Um, but but you know I think um, I I would never have imagined this and and I think this is the beauty um, I, I like to look a lot at my at my life um, and to draw parallels between what happens in life and what happens uh, here on the on the drawing table you know on the art table 
And while I'm doing this, this is also an opportunity to say that um, I'm so sick, and everybody I'm sure is sick of the Zooms in which uh, you see hundreds and hundreds of people. And, um, and this Zoom is different. Mishi was saying that uh, we, will be, uh, we will be working, we will be doing something. Most of the Zooms, people are just uh, complaining like this in front of the computer or, or listening. And this is a Zoom that I would love for you to show your, your, um, your working area. By the way, I have given no idea. Are we going to be able to see uh, screens of people? Uh, Yes, we so, don't so, see screens so of pe people, right? People, we, we, so people can write in the uh, in the okay. chat. Please make okay. sure to write to all attendees. And if you want okay. to, your screen to be open, we'll open your screen so we, you can share your creation. Right, right, right. So it's not like we see all the hundreds of heads uh, all the right, time. No. Okay, okay, all right. But in general, um, this is, uh, I, I feel that, um, that, there is a connection between the art space and, and life. And, and it, this connection just became even stronger now when we are static, when we are without, uh, when, when we are stuck, when we ha have um, confinement. And, um, and those are the places that, um, that art comes handy. Not because we would want to make masterpieces, and this might happen as well, but because when we don't have control over anything that is happening outside, we, um, you know, we are small in comparison to what's ha happening right now. But here, we are omnipotent. We have all the, all the control in the world. And not only that, but also our voice is being heard. So, um, so I feel that uh, for me, the way of, um, you didn't ask me that, but I'll say it in any case, for me, the way to deal with, um, with what has happened to all of us in the last two months has been by doing, by creating, by being uh, busy, um, working with the confinements. And, um, and this is in a way, how, um, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in a, in a couple of minutes, this is in a way how I came up with this way of working. It's out of necessity, it's out of um, working with my limitations. So I encourage you, I promise we won't talk too much, I encourage you in the next uh, hour to get up to bring stuff. First of all, go now and bring lots of uh, lots of stuff that, like Mishi was talking about, and get ready to to work. And um, there you go. And I can tell you already that this is um, this is a type of session that doesn't have to be linear. I mean to say that we don't have to be talking and then we're going to be working. You can already start working. And what I want you to do is your self portrait. And uh, you can work on, make sure to work on a piece of, um, of rigid board. And uh, the self portrait doesn't have to look like you. It's not about creating a likeness. It is about telling a story. It's about telling who you are through the objects that you choose. And not all objects that you choose should have a, 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 major, a major symbolism. Uh, if you find an object that you think is the right object for your nose or for your beard or for whatever, just go ahead with it. And, um, and you can use color paper to create some kind of a, of a shape on which you can then work. Again, it's not a must. It's a possibility to, to do that. And don't rush to glue. We have plenty of time. The whole, I will talk a lot about trial and error, but this is an exercise in trial and error. So the more you will be trying things, the more chances you will have to discover something, something interesting. So, um, and Nishi was bringing objects that uh, also had some connection to Israel. So um, also try to, bring at least one object or two that uh there you go there you go oh i want those Michi. 
um, try to bring one object or two that say something, um, what is Israel for you? What does Israel mean for you? What, um, you know, you can go to very nostalgic uh, areas. You can just talk about the Salat Hatzilim that you like, or you can talk about liking Israeli music, or you can talk about, um, you know, how Israel, you know, annoys the hell out of you. So um, anything is really possible. I was trying to, to, to do something, something like this, you know. Um, so just choose an object that tells a little bit what Israel symbolizes to you. So you can start working. And while we are talking, um, so Hanoch, so while people are collecting objects, uh, preparing their boards. I wanted to ask you, um, how did all of this start? Why, I mean, why can't you, I mean, you're an artist, why can't you, uh, you know, take a brush or still and draw like a normal artist? <laughs> why can't you be just like everybody else? Okay, so, um, so I, with your permission, I would like to share my screen and, um, and, and use a little bit of, uh, of work, to, of my work to tell you that. So for whoever doesn't know my work, I make pictures of uh, famous people, lots of work in Israel, Golda Meir, uh, from Golda Meir to Sarah Netanyahu, some of my work has been critical, satirical, humorist, humorist. Um, Bibi Netanyahu is there on the nostril, on the nostril. Um, by the way, Mishi, the slides are moving, right? Yes. Okay, so also Americans from Lincoln to your current president, Donald Trump, so um, who is made out of baloney and bananas. And, uh, and everybody just from Homer Simpson to Einstein. Um, and our collaboration, for those who don't know, has been um, during the mixtapes. So we did... Um, I did a couple of Israeli singers for you, for you guys, and it was uh, great fun to work together. We did Ari Kainstein, so Gov, Meir Ariel, and uh, Naomi Shemer. Um, but actually, I, to answer your question, I started to make pictures like this because of a box of matches. This box of matches gave me gave me the idea. It was sort of an external idea. It was there. I had to discover it. And this is something that happens to artists a lot. The idea is there. You just have to discover it. There is the proof that as a little kid, I was more normal. I drew with pastels. Um, this is me in kindergarten in Uruguay, in Uruguay, where I was born. This is me in um, element, elementary school. And uh, my early drawings were of cows and of steaks and uh, gauchos in Uruguay, my fourth grade teacher. And uh, in the 70s, we made Aliyah. We came to Israel. And um, as a kid, I loved to copy the cartoons that I saw in the, in the newspaper. But uh, I actually wasn't accepted to Bezalel. I, um, I, I slowly stopped drawing as a teenager. Then I was for five years in the army. And when I got out of the army, I wasn't a great draft, draftman. I couldn't draw. I wasn't great. I was okay. So I wasn't accepted to Bezalel. And I uh, felt like I was stuck. I arrived to New York where I studied at the School of Visual Arts. But uh, my drawing wasn't very, very good. And I, and, and then I started to look for other ways to, to make caricatures. And, um, and this poster of the Great Dictator film really, really influenced me because for the first time I saw somebody that wasn't a great draftman. It's a person, it's an artist that just cut a piece of yellow paper and put it on top of the black background. But it conveyed so much. It drew us in. It engaged us into trying to understand what's going on here and we all see charlie chaplin but we also all of us see hitler there so this was a very influential uh, image and then 30 years ago as i was trying to create a portrait of uh, 
of Saddam Hussein influenced by this image, I saw a box of matches, that box of matches, and that gave me the idea to use it as the master. So it was a total coincidence that came from an object that I found. And, um, and the rest in some way has been history. I found my own way of doing something. I found a place where I feel, um, I feel good, I feel confident. Um, and since then I've been working in, um, in many other magazines. Um, so, yeah. And Hanok, one of the things that you, that you um, talk about a lot and we've talked about a lot is that um, there's something about growing up in which we, we, we sort of forget uh, how to see things. So, uh, you know, when you're a kid, a cloud can be a roaring lion or a, uh, or, you know, a policeman running after a thief. And then when you hit a certain age, you, you just see it as a cloud. Um, so how, how do you sort of un, unlearn that, become less accustomed to see things the way they are? Well, I see, I, I think, first of all, that uh, we are um, all slaves of our brains. And our brains, in some way, they need to tag. They need to have preconceptions. Because if we didn't have preconceptions, um, we would be analyzing every situation from scratch. So the preconceptions many times are called names. Names are tags, are labels. And um, so when, when I know that this is a, a, a remote control, I'm just, maybe I'm not gonna really look at it. I'm using it in a functional, in a functional way. So the more we gain knowledge, the more we use that knowledge to decide what we are seeing, what we are looking at. So, um, so the secret is um, how you unlearn. And how you unlearn in artistic terms is uh, basically how you learn to see. And um, there is a beautiful quote that I love of, um, of Paul Valéry, the French um, poet and philosopher who said, to see is to forget the name of whatever it is we are looking at. And I love that quote because, because what that, um, I have it somewhere, um, what this quote is saying basically is, um, what this quote is saying is that only when we don't know something, when we are confused, is the moment that we are much more engaged, much more attuned, much more there, trying to figure out what's going on. And um, so I think the, 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 when we are seeing something normally, 70% of the information that we are using to decide what we are looking at is already internal information. It's all the preconceptions that our brain has. So, uh, um, so the story is uh, how do we find a way of, uh, of seeing with fresh eyes? And seeing with fresh eyes many times is tricking our brain, is putting our brain into a new situation which we are going to do now. For example, it happens in a very simple place when we start seeing faces. When we see found faces in the world around us, our brain is being tricked into a new place in which suddenly it is expanding its uh, awareness to see a face in a new place. The bathroom has many, many, many of them. I'm sure you've seen this outside. And, um, and usually you see the faces when a couple of objects meet, when some objects meet. So can you see faces here? I'm sure you might see these, but uh, there are others as well. So yeah, so um, I hope I answered your question. I forgot what it was, but. Uh, no, absolutely, about seeing, about seeing, uh, how, uh, unlearning how to see things. Yeah, you... and, and again, I talk a lot about play, and I think that art, let's say this, the art space and the play space 
and the education space are spaces that have a lot in common. And what they have in common, if I talk about the, the place, what we did before, we were playing. We were playing. We were in a place, in a space that had a, um, a safety zone around it. It was a safe space in which we could uh, behave in a different, in a different way. So um, the art space can be that way. I feel that uh, I say many bad things about people in my caricatures about Sarah Netanyahu, as I showed you before, about, uh, well, about Trump, I don't care. Uh, but uh, about uh, Sarah Netanyahu, that I don't think I would have the guts to say those things in words. I would have the guts to say those things in person. But within the art space, I become a different person. And this is the beauty of how art allows you to be another person, to, to behave in a different way. Okay, so I think a lot of people have probably collected their objects and are now sitting in front of their computers. Um, right. And what should, they be, what should they be doing? Do you have any pointers? Well, as I said, you can start working. Uh, I see the chat is working. And um, I would love, first of all, just as uh, Barry, um, Barry Hazan from Chicago introduced himself. And um, so um, I would love if you guys can share with us um, the object that represents Israel, where you are from, and to say, you know, I am Hanok Piven, and for me, Israel is uh, the Babagan Ustalad made out of eggplant. Uh, this is for me what, uh, what I miss in Israel, or what I would like, uh, what I crave, or, or whatever, you know? Or, or I love the energy in Israel. This is why I chose uh, a battery. I feel when I'm in Israel, I feel energized. I feel like I cannot stop. So share those with us. And we will be reading some of those um, while you are working. And as, you, as we are talking a little bit more, keep working, work. And then I would say that in uh, 20 minutes or so, we would love for you to share your images with us, the images that you created. And I'm not asking you to do that yet because we are too early in the process. And, um, and I would love to talk a little bit more about the process in a second. Um, but this, the secret of this process is uh, trial and error. Is to say, hmm, let me try this. Let me, put, um, let, me, let me try to play with this and see what happens. So the secret is to try many options and to glue only at the very, very end of the process. So I... This is why I don't want you guys to be, to rush into gluing, but, um, or into photographing and, and, sh and sharing with us. I would love it if that happens within, let's say in 20, 20 minutes from, from, from now or something like that. And, and just, just to yeah. tell everyone that, um, uh, if, oh, yeah. you're, if you're commenting, um, make sure that the two, uh, w right above where you put your, where, where you type in in the chat, there's a two field. Make sure that it's uh, to all panelists and attendees so that people can um, see each other's uh, um, uh, creations. And, and also, um, uh, I'll, I'll just say that you can post things to Facebook at the end. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll be uh, sending out links now uh, so people can post their end creations to Facebook. Oh, I see we just sent out a link. Um, wonderful, right. thank you. And um, me meanwhile, should people maybe type in what, what object they picked um, to, to represent Israel for them? Exactly. I think, uh, I think that this would be wonderful if people send in the chat why, you know, their names, where they're from, and what object they chose that represents Israel for, for them. And it can go, as I said, in all directions. Uh, try to stay away from the obvious, uh, the obvious connotations uh, and try to, to bring something personal about your relationship with Israel. I think each one of us has a very personal relationship with, uh, with Israel. 
And so I, actually, Hanoch, that's an amazing segue um, into, into a question that I, I've been wanting to ask you. So you were born in Montevideo in Uruguay. Um, you uh, um, made Aliyah when you were 11 to, to Ramat Gan, um, and you were an officer in the, in the army, in the Israeli army for, for five years, and uh, then you went and studied in New York, and um, what we actually haven't said is you're talking to us now from your home, and your home is in? Barcelona, Spain. Barcelona, yes. Spain. So, yes. um, and, and uh, um, you're in, in every possible way, uh, both Israeli and a citizen of the world. Um, uh, you, when you came back from America, you, um, you became basically a household uh, presence in, 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 uh, in Israel because you started working uh, with Haaretz and uh, doing work for them. And many of the sort of uh, iconic um, uh, images that you've shown of, of Israeli politicians and, uh, and various different public figures um, were created during that period for Haaretz. Um, oh, are you going to show some of them? Right, yes. Um, Sorry, I'm uh, yeah. just keep talking, keep talking. Um, so, so and, and people, by the way, are, if they're kids, they're uh, around, they're more than happy, more than welcome to guess who, who people are, um, to write in the chat, uh, just interact as, that's, a, that's an amazing one. Do you wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna say what that is, Tano? That's uh, Tommy. That's Tommy Lapid, made out of uh, the father of Yair Lapid uh, from 20 years ago, uh, made out of uh, all Ashkenazi food. There is um, gefilte fish, there is uh, a coleslaw, there is um, um, herring, and there is cement <laughs> there. Um, and if we stay with food, uh, Golda Meir made with um, the, the Israeli army to called uh, Golda Shoes uh, that the soldiers uh, used to wear, but um, wear, um, and, and, and what uh, Golda wore. And, um, and, um, and this is a kind of a political piece that I did in the 90s that appeared in Aretz, Arik Sharon, made out of uh, ground beef and uh, wool, um, lamb wool for his uh, hair and wolf uh, fur for his, um, for his uh, jacket. Um, Ron Arad made out of uh, black, uh, black matches, uh, burnt matches. It was the return to, to the matches. Um, yeah. So, um, so, so yeah, your question, sorry. Your story is, so your story starts in Uruguay and goes to Israel and goes to New York and goes to Barcelona. And, and yet you're one of the most Israeli people I know. So what's your story with Israel? <laughs> um, do you have uh, five hours? For um, you all, always. Right. Well, I think, you know, that um, li I, I, life has a way of uh, showing you things and taking you places. But um, I think the fact that I wasn't born in Israel and didn't grow up in Israel until the age of 11, um, was um, was very important to me. I, I I grew up as a teenager in Israel, but um, not really feeling Israeli. Um, I mean, not really feeling. Uh, not is I did I, I did feel Israeli, but I wasn't a Sabra, and um, and I feel that uh, the army service was uh, was an important uh, part of 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 my life. It. Um, I, I felt after the army service, like I, you know, I, I entered finally the um, the Israeli the Israeli world in some way. But then I wasn't accepted to Bezalel. So again, the the, the Israeli um, establishment had a way of kicking me out, and this is uh, and I left to New York because I just um, wanted to to study. So, um, so then I feel that I became a professional product of New York City. Ten years in New York where I developed my career, where I had all the freedom in the world, um, where, was the place where I became the person I, I am in some way. And I feel that what New York allowed me 
was to put together the pieces of the collage. What you are doing right now is to understand that I have a part that is South American. I have a very important part that is Israeli, that um, is, um, you know, all this um, uh, energy and no nonsense and um, aggressiveness in certain areas of life. Uh, chutzpah or whatever you want to call it, um, but um, but I also learned. I, I also have a New York side in me, and um, and all this became um, some kind of uh, ingredients of who who I am. Um, then, of course, I went back to Israel, and 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 I love working in Israel. I love. Um, the energy that I get in Israel, I do a lot of um, of nonprofit work uh, for NGOs. Uh, for I mean, some of you might have seen yesterday was the um, the ceremony, the joint ceremony, Palestinian Israeli Israeli Palestinians. So I created the the image of that ceremony. There is a Achino Amini standing in front of it uh, before the before the um, the create before the ceremony and uh, so what's my story with israel is that um you know i'm i feel israeli but i feel um i feel that i have other sides as well and it's okay and i and, and i actually cherish those other sides i cherish that i am a unique combination of many things just as everyone here is a unique combination of many things. And so, for me, being an artist is really cherishing that uniqueness and not erasing it in order to be like everyone, everyone else. And, so, um, you know, I married somebody that is not from Israel. So I ended up, um, th that ended up being a, some kind of uh, de determining factor in where I live and where my kids uh, ended up and, and, and all that. So, um, you know, it's, again, respecting the uniqueness of each one of us. Um, yeah, I hope it answers. Yeah, so I'm just reading some of the comments. First of all, my sister, uh, who lives right next to you in Jaffa, uh, says mm -hmm. that Amish Kapoor also didn't get into Bitzalel, so they might right. want to consider getting some of new folks in their admissions team uh, there at, at Bitzalel. Um, yeah, but, but you know what? Tomorrow I have a Zoom at 12 o'clock with an illustration class in Bezalel. So, uh, you know, I talk in Bezalel and, and, uh, and it's okay. So just to finish uh, the story, you said your neighbor in Jaffa. Uh, my studio is in Jaffa, in Jaffa, in Jaffa. And I spend most of my time, uh, half of my time in Israel and, and some of my time in Barcelona and some of my time traveling around. And um, yeah, traveling around uh, and teaching in the world. So, so um, yeah, yeah. Let's see some of some of the things that people are saying. So, uh, cucumbers. Shira from from New York says cucumbers and cottage cheese. Um, uh, a puzzle piece from Tiras Ham. Um, Lovely. That's a good one. That goes straight to the the core. Um, wild flowers in Kotsim is one of the things I love about Israel. I picked a few of them in my yard for my portrait. Uh, a nut from Phoenix has a pita and some Hanukkah candles. Rebecca has some cherry tomatoes that represent her family's history on Kibbutzim, as well as Israeli ingenuity in agriculture, cherry tomatoes. Um, Kara from Seattle has, oh, this is nice. Kara from Seattle has a lighter because it's hot, fiery, like some Israeli personalities. And when I think of Israel, it ignites connection for me, new ideas, innovation. And then I always think of Israeli smoking. Uh, <laughs> wow, Skylar from Tel Aviv. What does she say? I picked a canister of film, both old and modern, and even more complex than it looks on the surface. Also memorable and difficult to open up. Yeah. Nice. Haley from New Jersey says, I chose the Ace of Hearts as and the key. Israel is where I feel most complete. During Corona, my husband has been in Israel since the beginning of March and I am stuck in New Jersey. Libiva Mizrach takes on a new meaning. 
Um, I so, miss grapes. Sorry. <laughs> um, so keep yeah. those coming, please. That's great. Um, uh, um, and, and in the meantime, I, I wanted to ask you, Hanoch, um, you talked about teaching and, uh, and doing classes. And um, you um, have been going all over the world um, doing workshops and teaching uh, teaching people how to think about their own identity, to uh, reflect about different components of their identity, to create these images. Um, and, you know, your style is, it's interesting, it's both immediately recognizable. I mean, uh, anyone who has seen a Piven creation immediately uh, recognizes that it's, that it's yours. Um, and also at the same time, it's very, um, as we're all discovering now, as we're working during this walk workshop, it's something that anyone can imitate. Uh, it's, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's um, you know, doesn't, doesn't require the kind of, you, you don't have to imagine that you're Michelangelo right. or something like that. Right. And my question to you about that is, um, are you going around the world and, 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 and it, you're, you're basically sort of offering this tool for, for democratizing mm -hmm. art. I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're saying anyone can do art. You know, we have some four-year-olds I saw previously right. on the chat here that are, that are engaged, I'm sure very, very uh, thoroughly and busily now uh, in this right. creation. Um, are you afraid that your, that your students are gonna take you out of business? Um, well, no, because um, I think that, um, first of all, as I explained before, my, um, my art is based on my limitations. And those limitations, in some way, are universal. We all, at the age of six, seven, eight, feel like we're not drawing as well as somebody else, as the best artist in the class. We draw a horse and it doesn't look like a horse. And we um, pretty much when we're 10, 11, we stop drawing. Most people stop drawing. And since then, we kind of decide that we're not uh, creative. And the, the artists are those that are touched with the magic, um, with the magic wand of, um, of whatever that is, of the muse, of some muse. And for me, um, the goal of my uh, workshops, first of all, is giving people permission to play and giving people permission to create. There is no necessary correlation between knowing how to move a pencil and drawing a figurative, um, a, a well anatomically correct figure and your ability to be creative. Yes, it's true that, though, that, the two, um, that those two actions are based on one, um, on one capacity that a creative person is, has, which is to be able to see, to perceive, to pay attention. So the one thing that I teach people is to see, to pay attention. And, um, and that happens, as I said before, once we enter this new place, and then um, they pay attention to what's around them, but they pay attention also to who is around them. And you are seeing um, part of my work with Palestinians and Israelis. Um, in this case, is with Arab and Israeli teachers. Those are Palestinians from the West Bank that we've met in uh, East Jerusalem to do a workshop. And, um, and I think that if there is something that um, the objects teach, teach you and the objects uh, basically that art teaches you, is to pay attention to what's also inside you. Um, this kid is a refugee from uh, Eritrea, and um, uh, he participated in a workshop with me in Bialik Rogozin in the school in the south of Tel Aviv, where many children of refugees um, study. And uh, supposedly he didn't understand what I was talking about. I gave him a board, I said, glue the, bo glue the object on the board, and instead he glued everything on himself. 
Um, but I think that this is the beauty of uh, what happened to him. In some way, he ignores the convention of the space, having to glue on the board, but he connected to something that was within him. And that led him to do something unique. And I feel that this kid made an African mask in Tel Aviv. He somehow connected himself to his inner voice. So I feel that the big problem nowadays that is happening in so many countries, that is happening in the world, is that we are having a very hard time listening to our inner voice because there is so much noise. There is so many defaults that tell us what to do. The, and the defaults are ways, GPSs, um, Google, TripAdvisor, um, IKEA, all those manuals, all those big voices of authority that tell us what to do. So in a way, what I try to teach people is to quiet those voices because only when you manage to quiet those voices, you can really start within all the confusion, start hearing you. So that was a long, long, long answer. So I hope that people um, start uh, telling us that they would love to share their creations. Hanoch, I'm going to just share for the meantime a little bit my, my creation that I'm starting here. Uh, I don't know if, wait a minute. I don't know if you yeah. Is there see. a way that you can move the computer or, or turn the table around so we can see it uh, in the other way? Or yeah, maybe was... leave the computer and can you turn that table uh, yeah, 180 yeah. degrees? The, yeah. the portrait, I mean. Yes, the, the I will portrait. try that. Um, in the meantime, I will... I will tell that very soon we want to hear um, you sharing your images. So um, you can, for that, we will give you the ability to do what Mishi is doing right now. So whoever is ready to share the image the way Mish is doing now, please do that. Oh my God, Mishi. Tell I, us. I, well, I, first of all, Federica just got a mask in the mail because it's mandatory now to wear, to wear masks. So it seemed appropriate to me that my uh, self-portrait should have a mask these days. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. It's wonderful. I see the shells there. Um, and, um, and well, I, see I, I, took some, really, I, yes. I took some things that, sim that I felt uh, symbolized uh, me, some, cape, some, some radio cables there for my curly hair. Um, even though I don't actually like fish, I, uh, I chose a little gefilte fish for my, uh, for my eye. Um, great one, great with the with the carrot there. Uh, with wonderful. The yes. Um, I, I, and I, and I, I see the I see the that your hair has all this uh, entanglement, all this balagan right, there. Right, which seems to be quite uh, quite quite a, perhaps a more literal uh, representation than than should be. Um, but uh, yeah, we encourage everyone to, to start, start uh, sharing. If you guys also want to share your screen, we're more than happy to do that. Um, and Hanoch, meanwhile, I want to ask you something about, um, about shared and common knowledge that a lot of the references in your, in your work um, rely on, on people knowing the same things, right? Uh, right. You have to know something about Tommy Lapid for it to be, Right. To be humorous. Um, right. But there's also something extremely international about it. I mean, you, even if you've never heard of Tommy Lapid and you have no idea what gefilte fish is, it should, it right. should resonate with you. And can you talk a little bit about that, uh, about that sort of cultural transla translatability? How do things right. translate? Well, I think, um, you know, for the first maybe 10 years of my of my activity, I was uh, 
my work was for adults. I was creating just for adults. I was creating political cartoons, social cartoons, caricatures. And, um, and I remember somebody once told me, a book editor, she said, kids love the portrait of Woody Allen, even if they don't understand that the, the banana is an old phallic, an old banana that represents an old phallic symbol or something like that. Um, so even if they don't get that reference, they like the idea that, um, that the banana is an old. And, um, and I think people like to figure out for themselves. So when they discover, some, when, when you don't chew it for them, when you, don't, when you tell them something that engages them, brings them in, like when I show that Hitler, Charlie Chaplin poster, we figure it out as the public, so we feel connected. We feel a part of the creation. So from my experience, you know, I've conducted workshops in, multi, in so many cities in America, in, um, in, in Asia, in India, in Taiwan, in China, in Thailand, in South Africa, etc., etc., etc. And And I would say that um, the need to to create a face, a basic face, is universal. I mean, we are all um, programmed to do this, you know, to recognize that this is a face. You know, this basic symbol is international. And we can all, and, and, and we, when we see this, our in, intuition reacts empathically, being happy. And when we see this, we become sad. Uh, there is a part of it that becomes, of us, that becomes sad. So this is an international thing. Okay, All so right. I know hopefully this yeah. is working. I'm going to share some images that people have started to share on Facebook. This is uh, Matan Glazer. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. And I see some... people are raising their hands, so I hope we can hear also people. Uh, one second. This is wonderful, uh, Matan. Let me see. Um, so that was Matan. I saw that there was some Purell in there, which seems also very appropriate. Um, here is one from Michal. Are you able to see that? Yeah. Is this uh, mint? For uh, I, I wish uh, you, you can write when you put uh, your image. Also write um, write uh, what it is made of. Um, and, and please write also, it's great that you guys are uploading to Facebook. Please also um, feel free to add things to the Zoom chat. Uh, it right. will be e easy for us to see it there. Um, just go, here's one from Jessica. Lovely. Uh, let's see. Oh, how nice. Oh, it's so tiny. There, it's a tiny Tehillim there as her body. Yeah, as his yeah. Body. Yeah. Um, Jessica, uh, also you guys can write on the chat what it's made of. But obviously Jessica plays the guitar or is some kind of musician. Right. And, um, right. And, uh, Hope, hopefully everyone can see this, what we're, what we're showing. Uh, here, yeah. oh, here, here's the Michal one. Here's a better image of it. Yeah. Michal, uh, tell us a little bit more. What is this uh, shesh shesh? What is, it, 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 there is a <laughs> six and there is a key to something there in her nose. Right. Lovely. Uh, uh, I wish we could see that your face. Um, oh, I'm very lucky. Michal is very lucky. <laughs> yes. Great. Uh, and what do we have there? Oh, well, this, I believe, is actually from Yochai's daughter, uh, Eliana. Let's see. We'll try to see if we can get Eliana. Eliana is, Eliana is very creative. She's uh, using those brushes, I can tell. <laughs> we'll try to see if we can get Eliana um, online to explain her creation. Um, let me see. Uh, and there was yeah. one more there, there, this one, yeah. I think this, lots, lots of gloves. Gloves, right? Um, so if you guys um, 
I'll just stop sharing here so a second. If you guys um, want to um, want to explain live um, to us and to Hanoch and to show us your artwork, uh, please indicate that and we'll be able to bring you on to share your screen. It's uh, fun and we can, we can laugh a little bit. Um, so, um, so you'll be able to share the way um, Mishi shared his. Um, so something. we have a question from, from uh, uh, a listener. Once you've created something, who does it belong to? To you, to the observer? Okay. Um, <clears throat> once I create something, basically it's an, well, I mean, it depends what is the deal. But basically, um, the, I have, for example, now a commission every month from United Airlines magazine. You might have seen uh, my work on United Airlines Hemispheres magazine. So they buy only the right to print it one time. Um, so the original one um, is always property of the, of the illustrator. And... Um, Oh, okay. I see that we've got a couple of people ready. So, um, so let's, uh, okay. yeah. I, I rather see other people than keep talking. <laughs> All right. So um, hopefully we can promote them. Um, yeah. And, uh, and oh, the question the was not about legal rights. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Mishi, you confused us. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and it's your uncle. It's my uncle Barry. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Okay, so we have two people waiting to share. Come on. Okay, um, hopefully we can so make exciting. that happen um, very soon. I'm also donning a mustache in the meantime, and mainly maybe while we're while we're waiting, Hanoch, um, I'll just ask you: Going around the world, do you see cultural differences in the way people? Uh, paint themselves and, and portray themselves? Um, well, I think, you know, um, I would say that, um, that in the East, I mean, this is a very, very wide stroke that I'm making now, but I would say that in the East, in China, in India, um, in Taiwan, obviously, and in Thailand, people are um, people are into ornamenting. So people would be like there, there would be a lot of of of, of this uh, happening. If I want to create the line, I would do this. I, I would create the texture of the line is very is you you see what I'm doing that I'm creating uh, with lots of little dots that each dot is an object, I would be creating a line. So um, like I did right, right here. So for me, this is a symbol of, um, of their, their, their culture, visual culture, visual aesthetic is very, very busy and texturized. And um, while, um, while the minimalism that exists uh, many times in my work is more understood and and you and and exercised in in the western world this is okay so so we're we're just uh we have a bunch of people ready to share you just need to start your camera so perhaps we'll start with uh with either marielle or marcia if you enable your camera we'll marielle is to, ready yes marielle is ready we'll be able to see your creation marielle what should she, what should she do just she should just her enable camera. her camera. There we are. There, there is Marielle okay. and her microphone. Let me, and, uh, hold on, hold on, let me look. Okay, so this is mine. Okay. I did oh, it. Wow. I did it in like a last can, last minute um, with bananas and my dog choker and my pins and my husband wine. Uh, wow. Cork in my nose. So this was my kitchen last minute thing. That's great, and it looks like. Can we see you uh, uh, for a second? Because I, I, I saw you for a second, and it looks like you. I think. And 
uh, well, a little more hair, but yes. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Marielle. You're and, welcome. Um, thank Where you are you so speaking much. from, Marielle? What? Where are you speaking from? I'm an Argentinian that studies in Israel and lives in LA and does with my student every year a Piven workshop. So all my sixth graders do every year a Piven workshop. Qué bien, genial. Thank you so much. Igualmente. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Gracias. Thank you, Marielle. Okay, Marsha, are you ready to share? There is Marsha. Can, can you hear me? Can you yes, hear? we can. Yep. Okay, I'm here yes, with yes. Annie. Okay, Annie, here. Let's show. Let's, we're going to show you what ours looks like. Whoops, that upside down? Hold on. Can you see it? Yeah, lots of colors. Yeah. That's how old, how old are you, Annie? How old are you? I'm five. Five, wow. And where are you guys speaking from? Where, where do we live? I'm in Toronto. Tor Toronto. In Toronto. 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 Wow. Okay. Annie, Thank do you, you want so to explain why you, chose, why you chose what you chose? Do you know why you chose this? Why did you choose what you've got on there? Because I, because I, I, I wanted to be famous for my sheet. I wanted to, it to look like, like that. She wanted it to look like that. You're a good <laughs> translator, Marsha. Wonderful. <laughs> it comes with a Thanks. lot of habits. <laughs> um, we, we came in later uh, before you gave some sort of instruction. So we just grabbed whatever we had in the house and we just went nuts. So Well, you, you is, did a good job and, and being going nuts is, is fun. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. So we had stickers and we had feathers. Those are feathers. Hey, let me dry. Oh, she, it, she's very proud of what she's done here. She would not let me touch it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much. It was lots of fun. Thank you so much. Um, Wonderful. I think our producer, actually Skylar in Tel Aviv, wants to share her creation. Skylar, can we open your camera? Sure can. You guys okay. saw me you were here. So here's mine. I think it actually ended up looking kind of like me. Oh, wow. Totally. Can you explain, Skylar? Uh, yeah. So, well, basically, I'm a... I, Wait, show, I, leave the camera there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can you see... <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Leave it there. Yes. So um, I had this old paper bag that was really beautiful that I got when I bought something once and I'd been holding on to it forever and ever because I just loved the patterns. So I used that to make these headphones, which are the headphones that I use all the time for work and stuff in podcasting. Um, the handle of the bag became the hair and I have some nice mints that I use for my eyes. I like to use mints when I'm doing interviews because I feel like it would be rude to have bad breath when I'm interviewing people. Um, <laughs> here is the film that I mentioned in the chat that I decided to use as part of it. So, you know. I have to say And that's it. Great, thank, thank you, Skylar. And I think we have Josh from Portland, Oregon up next. Josh, can you open your- Thank you, your... Skylar. Thanks, Skylar. Thank you. All right. Wait. Hey, Josh. Josh, go for it. Oh, you want to talk about it again? So my son made this of me. What do you want to say about it? He doesn't have anything to say about it. But there we are. It's on a. I like. Board. I like the tiny beard. <laughs> It's uh, so the black is like foam. I don't know where it came from. It's just this piece of foam that we found on the ground. You kind of tore it up and did my hair, and it uh, it kind of matches my hair. And then I got the purple glasses. Yeah, I think I think uh, in a surprising yeah. way, it kind of looks like you. Yeah, and uh, it's hard to see, but there's yeah. there's a uh, we he cut out like um, a plastic lid, and so that's the eyeglasses right there. Can't really tell. Wonderful. Great. And Josh, I said that you were in Portland, Oregon, but you're actually in Bellingham, Washington. How are things going there in Washington? Doing good. We're, I mean, it's been crazy, but we're hanging in there. 
All right, Better well, than stay safe. Thanks. Okay, buddy. Great job. Uh, great job there. Okay, I think up next we have Haley. Haley, can you open your camera? And unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, there hi. There she is. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for putting this on, Mishy. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, this is my portrait. It's kind of hard to see. Hold on. Wow. Yeah. Can you explain? Um, yeah, let's see. Um, the Manva Flim, because what is there without Manva Flim? Um, this mask, Mishy, I'm very impressed that you had a spare mask that you could actually use one on your portrait. Kalakavod, that's very nice. No, no, we just have one, but it was Perfect. sacrificed for the portrait. All right, you take one for the team. I had to, uh, to make one there. Um, and under my mask, I'm saying the Shana Babu Shalayim. Hopefully that will, uh, that will happen next year. Um, and that's what I was saying before about Yabibu Mizrach, that uh, hopefully one of these days, that's, that's not in correct proportion, but down there is my heart. So that's where we're at. <laughs> and where are you, Haley? I am in New Jersey. New right, Jersey. right, right. You wrote before. Yes, definitely. We, we I am in good old, good old Jersey, and my husband is in Efrat with half our kids and half my kids are here. So it's all okay. good. All right, soon we'll, we'll be able to fly. Rebecca. Amen. Chag Thank you. Chag Thank you, Haley. Rebecca, can you open your camera? Yes. Oh, there you are. Can you see? So I'm going to have to move to my desk. Hello, everybody from the Seattle area. Hello. Yes, hello. Is it Hi. possible to uh, cancel that background or is that your portrait? No. No, I will <laughs> remove the background. Right. Right. Then we can see, see you. Oh, there, there you are. There you are. All right. Okay. So hello from Seattle, also via Argentina. And let me see if you can see. Hola. So I have here, I just did this very quickly. <laughs> some flowers that I picked for my wedding that were left over. I have an, an old art project that never seems to end. I have my fuzzy dreidels as my headset that I started another art project from the movie The Hebrew Hammer. And it's gardening season here, so I've got a few seeds left. And then maybe I'm uh, just listening here. This is the state of Idaho where I also have lived. And so that is my very quick 30 second self portrait there. Thank you. I hope you continue working on it because um, definitely this is a, at least a one or two hours uh, process to, to do some kind of um, well thought out um, portrait. I would say you are in the first five minutes of the game. As you know. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Well, it's been very helpful. To, I've been in a very big rut for creativity lately. So this was great. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. All right. Over to Elaine. Elaine, can you open your video? I think I can. Oh, um, hi, Elaine. It's Elaine Cohen. If that shows. Okay. This is what I did, and I'll tell you about it. So it's a plate, a bowl, because I cook. And my hair is becoming very white during this long period of being at home. Uh, I have an Israeli earring. One of the things I always like to do. You know, do. in Elaine, that in, that in Israel, uh, hairdressers have become essential because people don't like <laughs> to have white roots. So, uh, We're all in the same boat, right? Yeah. Um, the cheeks are from the motto of Bet Shalom one of the sponsors of the program today, so I thought it belonged here. Um, these are from my contact lenses, so they're my eyes. And in the middle is a C for my last name, and also, I guess, an aspiration that there'll be a reason to put on some makeup again when I get out of the house. That's from Clinique. And a reason to wear jewelry one day, I hope, and an aspiration to be outdoors in beautiful nature and special blend. Well, that's also a dream, how I would like to be seen. 
Great. I, uh, I would encourage you, uh, the, the little books are the, the cheeks, right? The, uh -huh. I would encourage you to try to put uh, eyeballs, pupils on, uh -huh. on, on top okay. of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to see what color your eyes are. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, find some pupils there and then okay. it would give a lot of uh, expression, even Good more idea. expression. Okay, I'll face. look at it. Okay. Thanks. And Hanoch Elaine right. and her late late husband Steve are have been friends of dear friends of my parents for more than fifty years. That oh my good. God! Wow, <laughs> lucky yeah. them. A very valued friendship. Thank you. Bye, okay. Elaine. Bye. Um, okay, do we have someone else up next? Um, Rachel. Hello. This is a great show, and I'm a huge fan of Hanok Piven. So thank you thank so much. You. This is just really made my day. I'm going to show you my creation. Um, oh, wow. Wait, we lost your video. Oh, hold on, hold on. Can you see it? Yes. Oh, lovely. Yes, yes, yes. A little bit to the right. There you go. Hold on. I'm trying to get the right angle. We're almost there. This is great, Rachel. If you can keep it like that while talking, it would be great. Okay, so my eyes are made out of two buttons that I got in a pair of vision straps. Wait, I think you're covering the microphone, uh, uh, Rachel. Okay, can you hear me now? Maybe just put the computer on the, on the bed there or whatever that is and, and, and let it let sit on the bed and, and point it down a little bit. There you go. Right. Okay. So the eyes are made out of two buttons. One is says clarity and one says passion. And so that represents a lot of who I am. The eyebrows are made out of these sparkly earrings that I wear a lot. Um, the nose is correct. These are two spells that I created. I gathered the spells at the beach. And one says love and one says joy, because those are affirmations that I like to have. And then these are exercise bands, because I do a lot of exercise. But then it wasn't the right color for my hair. So I Rachel, you're covering your mic. If you can just maybe try to move your hand. Okay, wonderful. And and Rachel, uh, where are you, where are you talking to us from? Uh, West Hampstead, Long Island. Long Island, wonderful. Yep. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hanoch, I don't know if you've seen online all these. Uh, there's some hilarious videos of uh, people trying to teach their mothers how to use FaceTime and how to. Oh no. No, uh, I haven't. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. Uh, this, uh, this trying to, to, to uh, shall okay. We, shall we finish with uh, Michal Spivak? Um, she offered to share. Yes, uh, and we also have a Nat who's already lined up. Oh, oh, a Nat. Yeah, I missed it. Yes, please. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Hi, yes. hey, Nat. Hello. <laughs> so here is mine. Oh my God. Um, and my son's is right next to it. Mm -hmm. uh, mine has the pita as a base. Um, I think I mentioned it on the chat. Uh, Israeli food. Uh, my dog's treats are all around it because my dog. Um, Hanukkah candles for the eyes. And the mouth is a piece of lemon because we all have these days. So. Um, <laughs> It's what I use for Larry David uh, mouth, uh, a piece of lemon just like that. Oh, I'm honored then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's... What's the name of your son? My son is Dan. He ran away right now. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> He's shy, but that's his, uh, his creation over there. And where are you okay. from, Inat? Um, right now I'm in Phoenix, but uh, originally from Jerusalem. Wonderful. Hey. Hi, hi. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. Hag Sameach. 
Thank you, Chag Sameach. And I think we have Michal up, right, Michal? Hi. There she yeah. Hi, Michal. I, um, I updated a little bit from the photo that I posted. I, I'm going to try, this is my laptop, so I'm going to try to turn it around and see okay. if you guys can. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, the same thing is happening now. I think you're covering the mic. Yeah, you're covering the mic with your hand. Michal? Uh, okay. can, you, can you hear? Yeah, you're, now we can hear you. Before you were covering the mic with your hands. Okay, okay, so let's turn up the mic. <laughs> it's happening again. Why don't, why don't, why don't you uh, just put the computer down on the, on the, on the table and, and talk normally instead of holding it? There you go. Yeah. Can you hear me? Aha, aha. Aha, aha. Okay. Maybe, photo. yeah, exactly. T I'll tell us about the portrait. Tell us briefly, about the portrait. Briefly say that, um, you know, I use the kutzim, you know, and the flowers as the wild flowers. That's my favorite part. I grew up on kibbutz in Israel. And it's really um, a part of Israel that's very near and dear to my heart. And uh, the, of course, the lucky six, because I'm a very lucky <laughs> person to have such a wonderful family and to um, have such a wonderful community that I live in. Um, pretty much, uh, you know, lots of nature in it, as you saw, uh, because I love nature, part of me. And uh, Hanukh, I have to just say that this is the greatest honor <laughs> to be able to do this with you. So uh, I've you. been an admirer of your art, and uh, we Thank have Shinshinim here in Rochester, New York, and they did a lesson for our students, uh, for our community, all about Hanukkah art. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. We probably did a, a workshop with them in the summer with those Shinshinim. Um, That's great. great. <laughs> Lovely. So um, nice to Thanks meet you, Thanks so Michal. much for sharing, Michal. Thanks. Thanks so much. So, Hanoch, uh, any, any, uh, any thoughts on the things that you've been seeing? Well, I think, that, again, that um, we all, I, I feel that in the last two months, uh, I've seen that people just have a need to create. They, need, they have a need to be doing something uh, proactive. Um, and this is just this is just an example, and and also people just love to talk about themselves. It's our favorite <laughs> subject. Let's face it, you know. I mean, I'm lucky that you asked me questions, so I I, I wasn't you know I wouldn't shut up. I, I was just talking about myself. That's our favorite subject. So if you give people a different vehicle to talk about themselves, suddenly they become artists without knowing it because they have the motivation. And they have an easy way of doing it. So, yeah. Uh, Lisa next. Lisa, if you're on, we'd love to see you. And Hanoch, by, as Lisa's getting ready, uh, let me just ask you. Uh, oh, there's Lisa. Hi. Wait, you're muted. Wait. There. There you go. No? Muted? Okay. Hi. Hi, now we hear you. How do I do, how do I switch this around to show the artwork? <laughs> I'm not sure. Hold on. Wait. Oh, there you go. Oh, here we yeah. are. Wonderful, wow. <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> um, okay, well, we, we have a lot of blue and white there. And uh, Ahava, because I, I love Israel. I'm actually Israeli, and I'm stuck in Boca Raton, Florida, waiting to get on a flight to go home. And um, the golf tee in the middle is because my husband is a crazy golfer. And mm -hmm. we have uh, the heart with food in the background for Yom Hatzma'ut. Wonderful. And a, little, there. And, and a bead, right? That's uh, the Ava is a bead there. That's a rock. Yeah, it's a stone um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. from my mouth. I actually have a big mouth, so it works. <laughs> okay. Thank well, you. Wait, thank, thank, thank you, so thank you Lisa. Thank you. Um, Hanoch, so, so. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Great show. 
Hanoch, Thank you. as as we uh, maybe uh, um, see if we can bring in one one or one last final person, I'll just ask you. Um, you 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 essentially you you go around the world doing these workshops and not in Corona days. Um, right. And and where, where where what kind of communities do you meet? Do you do this in schools? Do you do this in? Right. Uh, well, um, I've been doing it. Um, you know, I like to say that I work with everyone. Um, basically, I have done workshops uh, with four-year-olds, and I have done workshops, as you well know, at Harvard School of Government um, with, um, with public diplomacy um, graduate students. Um, I've done workshops in Israel with uh, CEOs of the biggest uh, high-tech companies and um, in schools for kids with special needs. So um, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it works for, for pretty much uh, everyone. And, uh, and the idea again is that uh, I think that wherever people need to communicate, they need art. Art can be, it's an underused vehicle for communication. And also, um, we have a team of teachers, of educators that uh, I, I work with in Israel, and we've been working a lot with educators, with the Ministry of Education, because um, there is a lot in common between the education space, what the education space should be, is not, but should be, and the um, and the art space. So um, basically, artists make mistakes constantly. Artists are in constant inner dialogue. Artists want to create something that hasn't existed before. Uh, artists need to deal with chaos and make their own order. And those are qualities that um, and and abilities that we all need nowadays in life especially now but uh, but you know so so we work a lot with teachers and um so this is uh i would say the teachers are now my favorite uh, crowd to to work with um lovely so Hano, my last question to you before we before we say good night it's already getting late there in barcelona my last question <coughs> to you is how how do you mark uh your mat's note how do you what, what do you usually do on your mat's note well, when I'm in Israel, I do some, I mean, I do something that many, many, many Israelis do. I meet my army buddies. Uh, we have a barbecue um, with army buddies, and we've been doing it for 25 years. So um, since our kids were tiny until some of the, those kids are officers in the army. So um, I would say that this is the most Israeli thing that I do. Um, you know, buying meat and chinawi in Yafo, um, because I live in Yafo, so they, they send me to buy the meat. And, um, and then we meet in, in a kibbutz and, uh, and, and do alaesh, um, <laughs> make a barbecue with the army buddies. And, and, you know, and we all laugh at each other as we used to do uh, 25 years ago, 35 years ago. Um, Time flies, you say, once a decade here exactly, or there. Exactly, exactly. Well, Hanoch, this well, was such a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, please, you, you, do you want to wrap up? No, I, I just want to say that um, thank you for participating. Um, whoever was there, that I wish we would have seen uh, your faces. But uh, please, please, please um, share them on the um, Israel Story Facebook. And, um, and I would love also to share those on my own Facebook and visit and say hi. And, um, and it's, um, I think people that create together become friends. That's what I can say. And, um, and that's what happens to me with you, Mishi. Uh, I love doing stuff with you, creating stuff together. I feel the same way, Hanoch, as you know, and I, I, uh, I'm told that there's already 20 other portraits up on Facebook, so we'll, we'll link to that and post to that. 
And Hanoch, thank you, thank you so much. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Wonderful seeing you. Toda, toda.